welcome and welcome back to my channel roxy nicole tv y'all so today i got a good one for you so the story time um i made some homemade pizza y'all i learned side note i know i'm random i learned how to make pizza from me and my wife's date night our therapist had recommended for us to do like a cinema thing date night and we made pizza and she created like a, a little concession for popcorn and candy it was so cute and so i put on the grocery list for this week some stuff to make pizza again and y'all it's so good paper plate alert look at this got olives mushrooms jalapenos and pepperoni it looks like we bought it or it was put in in the oven from one of those does you know pieces but it ain't it's made mm. 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 It's made. so y'all also i'm working too <laughs> my nine to five i'm on the clock yeah i'm on the clock um move rocket yeah, I'll move. Honey, as soon as I... I don't even be dropping nothing. And here she comes just trotting. If y'all don't know who Rocket is, come here, Rocket. Come here, mamas. Come on. Come here. Okay, she want to be stuck up. We're guess okay. Anyway. So, today I'm coming to y'all with a story time about when I keep my ex's car. Yeah. You heard me right. I can be so sweet, but don't lie to me. Don't lie to me in any capacity. One thing I learned when I was dating, you can literally have anything you want if you're honest before you do it. You don't have a lie. Okay. So. So, yeah. I was with this woman off and on for six years. So I had my myomectomy, which is not a hysterectomy, but a myomectomy. If you have fibroids, you gotta have um, a choice of a myomectomy, which they just remove the tumors, or you have a hysterectomy where they take all of your lady bits and then gotta worry about cycles or periods but around that time which was i had my surgery july 3rd or june 3rd june 3rd of 2013 so we were probably we started dating in 2008 19, 11, 12, we was on our fifth year at this point and going on our fifth year we was at four months four four years six months something like that anyway hidden right there and mind you we have been going through some issues in our relationship and she moved in with her brother and then once she moved in from her brother she was just like look you know I'm going to just get my own place while we work on our relationship. So I'm like, fine. 
you know, I didn't, I, I, we were so loyal to each other. So I thought I didn't have a problem with her getting her own spot. I mean, we was hanging around each other all the time anyway. So I went with her. She found a spot. I went with her while she signed her stuff. I helped her, you know, I didn't buy anything, but I helped her pick out stuff to decorate. You know, we would date at her house. We would date at the house that we shared together. At her apartment, we would date. And at, you know, my apartment, we would date. We would spend the night. It's like we were dating again. But all of a sudden, things shifted. As a woman, no matter if you're dating a man or a woman, you could feel in your gut when something ain't right. So, I had been, at this one day, I had been calling her and she didn't answer the phone. So, I wasn't, you know, worried about that because I know that she worked hard. You know what I'm saying? And so, I knew that she wasn't always available, which was fine she's at work normally when i get off work i would go by we would have dinner we will meet in between for lunch or whatever it was fine so it wasn't abnormal that she did not answer the phone okay so i got off work still no text message still no nothing so it was pouring down raining and that little voice said uh-uh, don't go home. Turn right. And I was just like, Lord. Instantly, I saw her praying. Because I felt that little in my stomach. But I hear it at clear as day. Turn right. Out of the parking lot. I to go left to go home. I go, oh, I go right. I go right to go to, at this time, my girlfriend's house. So, I go right and I'm praying. I'm like, Lord. Why am I, why do I have the urge to go this way? Why do I have the urge to go this way? All the while I'm driving. I'm driving. So I just said, well, I'm just going to go by her house and just see why something is telling me to go this way. Mind you, it's raining. I get to her, mind you, I get to her apartment complex. I turned in, go over all these humps because she stayed kind of in the back. So I go already over all these humps or whatnot, and <laughs> I get to the stop sign where she lives, and I'm getting ready to turn, and I see that it's her car and a red truck, and so I park, put the car in park. And I'm just sitting there, and I'm like, hmm. So, it's strange, because her stand, her living in the back part of the apartment complex, people that was in her little quad, nobody had a car. So, we knew her name. I knew her neighbors. Because we was, I was always over there. She was always, you know, at our, at our house that we want to share. So, cut the car off. Mind you, that pit that's in my stomach is getting more intense. So I get out. I walk up the steps. <laughs> Walking up the steps, some said don't knock. Just same way I heard that same something that said turn right. That same something said don't knock. So I ain't knock, but I, you know, so I'm like, bitch. Now, those slow jams are very familiar. <laughs> those slow jams is... <coughs> Y'all. Them slow jams is our slow jams, girl. We had mixtapes, girl. You know what I'm saying? Like, those slow jams are very familiar. Why are they playing? So, I'm thinking she cleaning up. So, I'm saying, well, I'm about to knock. So, I'm saying, mm -mm, don't knock. I hear a baby giggling. And I hear a girl talking. And it's like my ex is walking. Mind you, so when you walk into her apartment, you go down the hallway. It's her room. You walk back in front of the door. It's the living room. So I hear 
I hear my ex kind of like walking from her room, giggling, saying, you so nasty to somebody. Instantly, that pit that I had in my stomach went to my heart. And it's like, boom, 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 boom. And I'm like, do, 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 do. And I hear the girl say, who is that knocking on your door like that? And I get on the side and I try to hide because I hear my I hear my ex at the door. So I try to hide on the side of the wall. And she was like, I don't know, I guess it's somebody playing. So I'm knocking. And this time, I didn't hear her feet come back to the door. And she was like, oh, shit. Because I, I didn't hear her feet to move. She was like, oh, shit. And the girl was like, what? What? And so they all go pay. I hear Stampede like going past the door. And mind you, when I pulled up, I told y'all that it was raining. Her blinds were closed and the light was on in her room. So, keep that in mind. So, when I hear her, I said, oh shit. And the girl was like, what, what, what? And I hear... Everybody go past the door. I'm really not gonna open this motherfucking door. Open this motherfucking door. And nobody said anything. I'm really saying open the fucking door. And nobody said anything. Mm. So I'm not gonna knock her. I'm not gonna knock her. And nobody come to the door. And so I was out there knocking for about 10 minutes. And I hear her say, You need to leave. I need to leave. What am I leaving for? Why are you, you know, looking back now? Common sense was telling me why she wanted me to leave. So, I ain't going no motherfucking way. I ain't going no motherfucking way. You got to own it though. Mind you, this was two weeks before my surgery. I had these big ass tumors in me, already tired, emotional, sick all the time. Girl, I ain't have no engine. I'm trying to kick the damn door. You want to open this motherfucking door? Where did open go? She ain't open you So I was like, all right, bitch. I got something for you. So I walked down the steps and I sat on the steps. Mm. I sat on the steps. Tears started falling. And I called my friend Amber. I said, bitch, you would not fucking believe it. You would not believe it. Amber like, what, girl, what? I was like, no. This bitch had the audacity to be fucking cheating on me. Amber was like, what you at? The first thing she say, as I'm like, she cheating on me. The first thing Amber say is, what you at? I'm at her house and she ain't open the fucking door. I'm about to break the bitch windows out of her car. Amber's like, Shandra, don't do that. Don't do that. Don't do that. 
mind y'all, I told y'all that family and close friends call me Chandra. My friends, some of my friends call me Nicole. Hence, Roxy Nicole TV. So, you might hear me saying a friend or a family member calls me Chandra. I don't use Chandra because people butcher my name. I hate when my name is butchered. Side note, moving forward. So, you need to leave. If she cheating, you need to get up out of there. Mind you, I'm 25 at this time. And she's trying to be a real good friend to me. And trying to tell me that the right thing to do. I wasn't listening. I wasn't listening. So, fuck this, I'm not answering that job. I called her. I was like, you mean that she answered? Can you believe that she answered? I was just like, so you cheating on me. That's what we do now. I ain't cheating on you. We ain't together. Because mind you, the girl there. And she trying to play me like a shortstop. I was like, okay, bitch. I was like, we ain't together? Okay. And I hung up. I walked back out. Get in my car. The blinds now... The lights off and they open. So around her apartment complex, they had like these big old rocks in the landscape. Got on top of that hood and tried to crack her, <laughs> tried to crack her windshield. Y'all, I used to be ratchet. Don't judge me, judge mama. Okay, I used to be real ratchet, but by grace, I'm not this person. I tried to crack her car, but mind you, I ain't have no strength to. It didn't even crack it. It didn't put a nick in it, girl. So, well, this time I used to serve tables. So, I had a wine opener. I used to work at Carabas as a server and bartender. I, the wine key. The old school wine keys that you use to open wine. I took that. I popped that little latch back that you put. It's like this point to go. Y'all know how to open wine if y'all drink wine. But anyways, the pointy part that actually goes inside the court. I popped that mug out. And I ran down that car. I ran up. <laughs> and I ran down. I ran up. And I ran down. Both of them. I keep the shit out of that motherfucking car. And I got in my car. And I left. She ain't answer the phone when I called her the second time. And I said, bitch, fuck you. You'll never be shit without me. Mind you, I was prepping for my myomectomy, my very first surgery dealing with my fibroids. This girl was my blood transfusion donor. She was on all my paperwork. We had been together. We did life together. But I was so sick that I didn't pay attention to her moving shady or funny. Because if I wasn't working, I was sleeping. I wasn't going out at this point in time. I was too tired. The fibroids, the tumors was taking everything from me. So, is it right that she cheated? No. Do I understand that she cheated? Yes. Was it right? No. Do I understand? Yes. Would I ever do it? No. I wouldn't because if I love a person, if I'm planning on marrying a person, if I'm dating a person, it doesn't matter. If I know that you're sickly or whatever and I choose to stay, no way in hell I'm going to cheat on you. No way. So, I keyed a car, went home crying, my home girl that I was on the phone with that I called, I was like, we had so much stuff together. Mind you, 
we was living together since 2008. And when she got another apartment, we would pay her bills at the end of the month, my bills at the top of the month, and then the next month we'll switch, pay her bills at the top of the month, pay my bills at the end of the month, and that bitch showed the shit on me when we pay her bills at the top of the month. Or that's what I found out about it. So, I was talking to Amber and I was crying. And I was like, we just pay her fucking bills and my car no do and blah, blah, blah. i never forget this. i do anything for Amber. Amber gave me the money to pay my bills that month. That's a friend. They don't make friends like that now. And she let me... Pay that money back piece by piece. I'll do anything for Amber. And from that point, you should we done been in each other's lives so much. The morning of my surgery, my granny was like, Where is such and such, my ex? And I'm still hurt, crying, depressed about it. And I'm like, I don't know, granny. What you mean you don't know? What you mean you don't know? Ain't she supposed to be here? Ain't she on some of your paperwork? I was like, granny, she ain't coming. Oh, man. Who I'm going to ride with? Because, mind you, we my surgery wasn't in our town. I had to go to Birmingham, which is, our, which is Alabama's, um, like, prominent medical facilities so the director of the oncology OBGYN and oncology department is who administered my surgery because my fibroids was entirely too big and they don't know how you know I made it and dealt and all of that which I'm entirely blessed but when you treat people like shit you have to be careful and I don't wish any harm on anybody. I pray God give her all the mercy. But the last picture I seen of that girl, she had a walker. I don't know if she was recently having surgery herself or what. But you have to be careful how you treat people. But even after that, we still wasn't done. If y'all want to hear how we finally ended, I'll let you know. But thank you guys for eating with me. And thank you guys for listening to my story time. I'm on my last slice of pizza. It's almost time for my next meeting. So thank you guys so much. If, as always, if nobody told you today that they love you, know that I love you and that God loves you, please leave a positive comment down below and let me know what positive thing happened to you today.